Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, define self potential again. Define self potential. Now, that is the unit in which we describe it. Okay, that is a uh huh. Oh boy, I got my work cut out for me, boys and girls. The potential of a chemical reaction to take place. Okay, uh, all right, no, here we go. Just like that. Okay, cell potential is a separation of charge. Uh huh. Separation of charge between where and where. What? Thank you. Good guess there. Between the anode and the cathode. All right. And that helps us to do work. Uh, define work. And if you say push or pull, you'll be in trouble because we are now out of sixth grade. How about a force? applied over some distance. In terms of what we are talking about, a galvanic cell, I think you can quite easily see what the distance is. Or not. Uh, the distance is the wire. the wire. And now you need to describe to me what the force is. The emotional electrons. Thank you. The electromotive force, the dri the driving force behind the electrons. Okay, so if you have these two, uh, listen, here's how I'm going to describe it to you. If right this moment in time, I told you to dump, jump in the freezer, what would happen? I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. You would so do it. If I told you to jump in the freezer, you would jump in the freezer. In the freezer? In the freezer. Where is this freezer? All right, I <laughs> Of course you do. Okay, what thermodynamically would uh, occur the moment you entered the freezer? Heat would leave your bodies. Heat would leave your bodies until you became, you until you reached thermal equilibrium, at which time you would be a... Oh, yeah, you'd be very chilly. Okay, now, um, what is trying to happen here when you have a big plus charge and then a not plus charge? Uh -huh. The electrons are actually being pulled from the anode to the cathode, is that correct? Yes, it is. So that is the force that's being acted over the distance. Well, um, we use this work to do what? To calculate the electron. To do whatever we want it to do, don't we? We use it to power our calculators, to make a part of the camera, except my battery is totally fatigued and now it has to be uh, plugged in all the time. All your phones that are checking right this moment. There's a negative charge on the side of the cathode. Why do the electrons want to get into it? The cathode itself is positive. Because okay. um, that is a good question, isn't it? All right. So we have uh, we have defined the force. We've defined the distance. Now we know work is done, and we are talking about this work in terms of the volt. So the force it is equal to a volt, and that's work times charge, which is measured in coulombs. What do we, um, what did we talk about the voltage being yesterday? Cell potential. Yep, the cell potential. So in terms of what we're talking about, the cell potential is the thing that we measure in volts. It's equal to the work over the charge, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, rearrange this equation. Work is equal to the charge times the cell potential. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. Yep, because we passed algebra one. Now, let's recall in chemistry, we always put ourselves in the perspective of the system. So we are right there with the system and we are looking out towards the surroundings. And, and together, the system and the surroundings make the universe. 
So um, when work is done by the system, it is done by the system on the surroundings. Okay, so work is leaving the system. Therefore, when we're talking about work, we need to have a negative sign somewhere in there to show the direction of flow, correct? Because when we're talking about thermodynamics, the sign just tells you the direction of flow. So work is equal to the negative charge times the E cell. Everybody good there? Mm -hmm. that, that whole charge thing makes me unhappy. So we're going to talk about charge in terms of something else. Charge is also equal to the number of moles of electrons transferred. Transferred when? Where? Through the wire, but where do they come from? From the original. Yeah, from the oxidation. Yeah. Yeah, and the reduction. Okay. So the number of moles of electrons that are transferred during the redox equation uh, reaction times Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant is a number that I transpose all the time. This is correct. It depend on what I've written and not what I say. Okay. Thank you very much. And somebody who's really smart figured out just a moment ago that it's the charge on an electron times Avogadro's number. They should be paying attention to what I say instead of playing with their calculator. Okay, so Faraday's constant is 96,485 coulombs per mole of electron. So that brings us down to this. Work is equal to negative non -fi. Really, really, I, I'm, I'm certain if you went to a chemistry professor anywhere and said work is equal to negative non feed, say, yeah, what? That is correct. Now you can say that too. Okay, let's do this per just incredibly easy problem that you'll never see one this easy again, but here we go. In a particular experiment, 1.33 moles of electrons were passed through a cell at an average potential of 2.10 volts. How much work was done? Work is equal to negative non fee. Negative 1.33 moles of electrons times Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole times uh, the E cell, which is 2.10 volts, which also can be described as a joule per coulomb. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, is equal to some number. Some number. Clickety clackety click. You know, I'm not going to be doing your math for you, except this time. Okay, the answer is negative 269,000 joules, which um, you can otherwise be stated as 269 kilojoules uh, of work done on the surroundings. Okay? Uh, please define for me Gibbs free energy. Is that the spontaneity? Uh, it describes spontaneity, that is correct. I need you to define it. That would be entropy. The amount of energy that can be used and that can be taken from the system applied to the surroundings if, uh, in a given situation. Wow, that was a pretty good answer. Not the one I was looking for, but um, that might do. Okay, okay, okay. Nobody? No one can define Gibbs free energy. The energy that's free to do work. Thank you. Very nice. Gibbs free energy is defined as the energy available to do work. We're just talking about work. Correct. 
So I think we can replace work in our equation with delta G, because delta G means the energy available to do work. So delta G is equal to negative non fee. But how tricky is that? So uh, let us think back, oh gee, I don't know, a while ago. If delta G is a negative value, what does that imply? Well, it's well, that, it's spontaneous. that it is spontaneous. If delta G is a positive value, what does that imply? or non-spontaneous in the forward direction. And if delta G is equal to zero, what does that say? Dead Pardon me? Dead it can go either direction. No. If it can go either direction, you need to give me a big grown-up explanation. It's at equilibrium. It's at equilibrium. Good thing she's here for y'all. She's just got the answers today. So is it right next to No, it doesn't. So you said that was equal to. Okay, no. these are um, not delta G. These are not delta G. This is. Uh, <laughs> I know, but they are the opposite. So okay, the hang way. on. We'll see why they're the opposite. We're just looking at this, refreshing our memory, and seeing how it applies to this. Now, what is the e part of numphy? Cell the cell potential. potential. Uh huh. The cell potential. So, um, if we have a positive value for the cell potential, that is going to make delta G negative. a negative value. So that means that um, with a positive cell potential, delta G is negative. It will imply spontaneity. That means that the system will make a good battery. If, on the other hand, we have a negative value for, delta, uh, for um, the cell potential, that will make delta G a positive entity, which means it would be non-spontaneous, and it would not make a good battery, would it? No. Nope. Now, if the cell potential were in equilibrium, it was zero, that would make delta G zero, which means it would be at equilibrium, and a um, battery at equilibrium is a dead battery. Okay? Using a standard reduction potential table, calculate delta G for the following reaction. 